do you use Power BI Premium in your environment? Or you are planning to use Power BI Premium? Today, I have an interview with Josh Kaplan, a Group Program Manager of a Power BI team focusing on Power BI Premium these days. And we are talking a lot about Power BI features, uh, Power BI Premium features. And apparently, he is also a fan of football. Good morning, everyone. Today we have uh, Josh Kaplan from Power BI team. He's a principal uh, program manager in Power BI team, mainly working on Power BI Premium and uh, uh, features related to uh, modeling like Azure analysis services of uh, Power BI relationship as well. Uh, hey, Josh, can you introduce yourself? Hey. Yeah, I'm the, uh, the group program manager for Power BI Premium uh, and uh, analysis services. So yeah, I cover all the premium aspects as well as all the AS features that we're doing, not just in AS, but also in Power BI. Mm, that's, that's awesome. Uh, and you had a session, uh, have you done your session about Power BI Premium or yeah. it is coming? I did a session on uh, managing premium yesterday, uh, and it was the Tuesday on the, of the conference. And uh, Christian's doing a session, as my, I'm also listed as the co-presenter on Thursday. Uh, but Chris will do the whole thing. Mm. That one will be about aggregations and data modeling. Mm, that, that's great. That's great. And, and you live in That'll Seattle. Be a fun to say. And you live yeah. in Seattle, Redmond. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's Certainly nice. in a hotel, but uh, okay. I'll be going back home today. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah, home later today. Right. Okay. Yeah. I see. Uh, so, so talking about premium, I still get a lot of questions from uh, my clients all around the world that uh, how the adoption of premium is going. Do we have many clients going towards premium? Oh, certainly. Um, <laughs> uh, the adoption is going extremely well, um, which is some of the reasons why we've been doing things like trying to accelerate a lot of the uh, self-service diagnostics and, and management and debugging. Because um, we're getting so many customers now that we uh, we need to be able to uh, support that volume of people and make sure that they can actually support themselves when they're using their premium capacities. Yes, correct. And and I've seen that a new diagnosis features and control features of premium, which you also mentioned in yeah. one of your latest blogs, as well. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of work the last uh, five six months to really change the way premium behaves when it starts to run hot on capacity, uh, change it in a way that we can really document and explain it. And we've been spending the last few months documenting and explaining it, while at the same time working on metrics that show what's going on. Um, now, as of a few weeks ago, we have the explanations ready, and you can now see what's going on all. Um, so you have the full picture. So now we're, you know, we're really starting to push the message and uh, make sure people see that the, the metrics app is there and know how premium is supposed to behave so they know what they need and how to use it. Mm, that's great. And, and uh, right now, premium has its own team, right? Because previously it was just like a licensing in May 2017, but now mm -hmm. I imagine you have a team working on premium. Well, premium is, is, is just Power BI. Yeah. Um, and it's not that we necessarily have people dedicated to premium. There's different aspects of Power BI that have resources dedicated to them. Um, and in the end, a lot of stuff is also just AS. So it's a lot of Correct. the same people working on all the same stuff, uh, which is good in some ways when you release something, it releases in a whole bunch of places. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of, it's, it's a big collaboration. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Uh, talking about premium, I've heard from some of clients that uh, when they move from, let's say, Power BI shared capacity to premium, they feel a little bit uh, difference. And uh, uh, we talked about that, that this is more related to the way that their model should be managed. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Well, there's a few things. When you're in... Uh, when you're just using pro licenses and you're in what we call shared capacity, yep. um, we're basically managing those capacities for you. You're paying per user, um, and we make sure we have enough capacity there to support the users that are on there. So we're kind of taking the burden to make sure the hardware is there um, and everything's working. But, um, and all you need to know is how many users you have. Uh, so planning out you know, the next year, 
uh, what you'll need, uh, you need a number of users. Where when you're in when you're in premium, you're now managing the capacity. You can have as many users as you want on there, but you need to have the amount of capacity to support that. Um, and that's where the main difference is. So when you move things over to premium, um, you know, there are depending on which gear you pick, you might actually be picking uh, smaller hardware skew than we actually use in our in our shared service. Uh, so depending on your miles, you might actually get some slower performance when you just move it directly over. Um, but yeah, so there's, there are some hardware differences there where you might notice some changes. But when you start to pull our sizes, they, they match up uh, more evenly with what we uh, put out and shared. Um, but it, 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 you, you do have dedicated capacity. So you're not competing with other customers on the same hardware. But again, you're competing with yourself. So if you have uh, lots of users on there, um, you need to make sure you are properly scaled for the types of things you're doing. For example, a lot of people ask, how many users can this premium capacity support? Well, it, it varies. How many uh, data sets are those users using? If you have 700 users um, using one data set or a small number of data sets on a P1, it might work great. Um, if you have um, a small number of users all using different data sets um, on the same P1, then you might not have enough capacity to support that because you know, each data set has to be loaded into memory and you're going to pay a, a price for each data set that's actively being used. We let you have more data sets on a capacity um, than that capacity actually has memory to support, and we do that by kicking out data sets that aren't being used to bring in the ones that are being used. Um, and this works great. It gives you more efficient use of the resources you're buying. You can cram more things on there and get great performance. Um, but you do need to have enough capacity to handle your, your active load. And then once you get into, into that uh, a little bit deeper, um, the next question that always comes up from people is, well, what is using my resources? Now, now, that, you're, now that people are responsible for making sure they have the right amount of resources, it's, it's, uh, more, it's sometimes more important to make sure that uh, you have the most efficient DAX. You're not just churning through memory needlessly when you can rewrite your DAX queries, and now you can fit several more models on there at the same time because you have more memory available, or queries are running faster. When they run faster, they finish faster, and more things can run after that. You get more things through at the same time. Um, those are all, all very important things when looking at your capacity and how much they can handle and how much you need. Right, correct. So, so it is fair to say that uh, when you are dealing with premium, you need to be more careful about the way that you are managing your capacity and uh, managing your model, performance of your model, and all those configurations. Yeah, I mean, you, you assume a new role here as the, as the capacity admin. Um, so you take on that responsibility uh, of making sure the capacity is uh, there. Now, you don't necessarily have to worry about your models. Um, you know, it just it means that you might need more capacity if you have a lot of really inefficient models on there. Um, and good for us. Um, but uh, I'm not sure everyone likes to just keep adding more and more capacity when there's uh, improvements they can make to their, their models or their queries to, to make better use of the capacity they have. And the capacity metrics report will help point out places where there's some inefficiencies, there's some models that are running really hot and, and consuming a bunch of memory. Um, the capacity metrics report really helps push you, uh, uh, point you to those, uh, those things. Correct, correct. So, so um, uh, is it fair to say something if I compare it, let's say, with a simpler word? So uh, uh, saying that if you want to take photography, you can use some of those small cameras that you just press the button, it just shoot everything mm -hmm. at the best, let's say, quality that it can, and it is really easy to yeah. use, compared to a really powerful camera, DSLR camera that has a lot of configuration, a lot of features, you can get really high quality photos, but you need to know what you are doing with that. So I think Power yep. BI shared capacity and premium are kind of in the same position. Yeah, Amir likes to compare it to um, owning a car versus leasing a car. When you're leasing a car, you know you're turning it in <laughs> yes. years and you're not invested in you know, this long-term performance where you're owning it, it's, it's yours, you own it, you, you, you deal with it, um, and you have to make sure it's going to work for you in the future. Yes. Yeah, that that's correct. Yeah. He says it more eloquently than me, but yeah, hmm. that that's perfect explanation. Uh, so, uh, talking about premium uh, roadmap, what features we are expected to see in uh, next year, uh, as long as it is not under NDA, let's say. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, 
there's a few things. So in the areas we talked about around management, um, we're going to keep improving. We're going to keep improving the uh, the metrics, the controls that an admin has to affect what can happen on their capacities. Um, general improvements is how those capacities work when they when they get stressed. There's new features coming to premium or that will run on premium capacities, including the paginated reports from reporting services, um, data flows, and those will also all be competing for research on your same capacities. You have to monitor and uh, manage those now all together. Um, so we'll be extending our research governance to, to cover those cases. We'll be extending our metrics to cover those cases. We have some new uh, admin controls in UI we want to bring in there. Uh, and we also want to you know, make sure we're doing a lot of education here. Um, make sure all the information on how this stuff works is out there. We're training up customers. We're training up partners to work with customers. Um, let's do a big push from us to, to make sure all this information is becoming available. In addition to just premium itself, you know, we're working on bringing all the AS functionality to Power BI Premium, um, which if you saw the, the uh, session that Arun and Amir did uh, on Tuesday at Ignite, yeah. Um, they uh, demoed a lot of those features. We've been demoing some of those for, for a long time, but um, this is, I think, one of the first times we had all the bits and pieces together in one presentation where we had you know, the work we did for uh, getting the XMLA connectivity to Power BI. So you, know, you can connect to an AS server, and you get a list of all the databases that are on there, and you can you know, treat that like one server and manage it like one server. We don't have servers in Power BI. We have um, workspaces all the end users receive. So you can now actually treat Power BI, or you will be able to treat Power BI workspaces as if they were AS servers, just connect to it like an AS server. This includes you know, connecting the query, but also connecting for management and CRUD operations, uh, as well as things like Profiler. And basically, you want it to look exactly like Power BI, sorry, exactly like AS, so that everything that already works on AS continues to work. Um, you would also see things in that presentation where we did a lot of tooling work in Power BI Desktop to handle more advanced models. Um, more complex models, lots of tables, lots of metadata. You know, we had the, the new diagram control, which supports lots more tables. Also has, um, uh, you're allowed to have multiple layouts in there, uh, so you can have, um, you can break the, the diagram up into a lot of smaller diagrams, so it's easier to work with. Um, it also supports things like multi-select. A lot of times, you're working with larger models, you have a lot of metadata. You want to make a lot of bulk changes at once, so you can, you know, highlight 20 columns, and say, yep, hide all these at one time, versus, you know, we have to do it all one at a time. Um, so a lot more efficiencies in there. Um, uh, we also showed the um, – you know, we, we did incremental refresh already. We've shown that before. Uh, that's in, in, in Power BI now. Um, and we showed aggregations, which is one of my favorite features, which really changes the way you have to use cache tabular models in the past and really opens it up to massive models. Um, mm -hmm. But really also just how you even uh, manage – Normal average size models today. Um, you know, typically, you put everything into a. Ideally, you want to have a model that represents the entire business area that that um, you're trying to report on, um, which is fine if you can fit everything in memory. But often, what happens is you end up creating models based on what you can fit in that model. In terms of what fits in memory, you end up with multiple models. Now you can create one model has everything in it, and some stuff will hit aggregation. Some stuff might go back and hit direct query. You can have multiple direct query sources in the same model, um, all in different aggregations. So you can really make the best use of uh, our in-memory cache plus all the different uh, you know, database technologies that we support with direct query to make one model that works, that performs really well and has everything in it. So I'm super excited about how, that, how that's going to uh, change things. Great, great. Thank you for a great explanation. Uh, so one thing that uh, some Power BI uh, clients asking uh, me about, uh, like all these Power BI Premium compared to Azure Analysis Services, is that if they want to uh, build a model uh, these days uh, and they want all to use all these features like incremental load, uh, they want mm. to use like aggregations, we have those in Azure Analysis Services as well. So which one is the best choice for them usually? Well, at the moment, you actually you don't have aggregate. So aggregations, incremental refresh, the, the incremental refresh policies are all uh, exclusive Power BI features right now. Um, the, the way I think of it is premium is, is like another SKU almost of AS, where you have in, in Azure AS, we have a basic SKU, which has a, a, 
a lot of features, but limited compared to the standard SKU. And if you notice in Azure AF, we never had a premium SKU. It was always basic and standard. I, I think of uh, Power BI Premium, like the premium SKU of, of AS, um, where you have a lot more, you have more features, you have a whole bunch of more capabilities on there too, and you'll have all the reporting features all packaged in one thing. You don't need to have, it simplifies the architecture, you only need one, one service in there that does everything. And especially when you talk about RS coming into it, um, Excel already being there, you, ha you now really have this whole one-stop shop for everything. Um, you know, AS and Power BI already goes beyond some of the stuff you can do in SSAS and Azure AS already in terms of, the uh, biggest one is probably paging, or we call eviction where uh, I mentioned it earlier, uh, you can have more models than you actually have memory to support on your capacity. And uh, you know, in AS, you have to have enough memory to support your data, even when no one's using it, um, plus the queries that are gonna come in and your refreshes. Whereas in, in, in Premium and in Power BI as well, uh, Power BI Shared as well, um, you have more models on there and we will kick things in and out of memory as they're being used or not being used, so you can actually overclock that memory, overbook it, and get more efficient use of it, um, which is really useful, especially if you have lots of small models um, that you're managing. If you have lots of servers where, you know, uh, throughout the week most of them sit idle, and then they each have peak performance, at, you know, peak times of the week where they're being heavily used, you can consolidate those into, into Power BI and uh, actually have less capacity there, so we'll kick things out and bring things in as they're being used. That way, hopefully your, your resources are being used uh, closer to 100% of the time than, you know, uh, than something smaller than that. Mm, great. Awesome. Thanks for your explanation. I think audience will have a great uh, view of what to do, what to choose with con considering premium. Um, so uh, I also see that you are also a fan of uh, football, American football. Are yeah. you following Seahawks? Yeah, definitely. Oh, I'm primarily an Eagles fan. I'm from Philadelphia originally. Right. Um, the, uh, yeah, I moved out to Seattle 10 years ago, uh, and I'm trying to watch some of the local stuff. I've been, uh, I've been going to Seahawks games out here when they're not playing the Eagles. Actually, when they're playing the Eagles, I go in my Eagles jersey. Yeah. Um, which, has not, which has been a little unfortunate the last couple of years. The Eagles have been great everywhere except when they come to Seattle. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's fun having the, you know, the Eagles right now, you know, going to the Super Bowl, winning, and uh, the Seahawks have you know, been here in the, uh, the last few years and also been really good. Mm, that's good. Hopefully you win the next match. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, another good season. Awesome. Great. Thank you for your time, uh, Josh. Uh, yeah. It was great talk with you. Hopefully we'll do this interview next time in person somewhere. Definitely. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for setting it up. Yep. Bye.